preparing our hearts in prayer for worship, let us pray together this collect. Almighty God, to you, to you all, all hearts, hearts are open, open all, all desires known, and, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn of praise today is Jesus Christ is Risen Today. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. <laughs> God's kingdom, kingdom now and, and forever. forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Amen. with you. Let us pray. O God, who for our redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live with him in the joy of his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we will hear the lessons. First lesson for the day of resurrection is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, 
He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. That portion of the Psalter appointed for the day of resurrection is a portion of Psalm 118. Psalm 118, verses 1, 2, and 14 through 24. Let us read this psalm together. Give he thanks, thanks to, to the Lord, Lord for he, he is good. good. His, His mercy endures forever. forever. Let but Israel, Israel now, now proclaim, proclaim. His, His mercy endures forever. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for your answer me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this, this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad. be glad in it. Second lesson is from the first letter of the Apostle Paul to the church at Corinth. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, uh, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely, untimely born, he appeared also to me, for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel hymn is on the
day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you had carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, 
Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that all that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. Hallelujah! He is risen! The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah! That's the greeting that we should greet everybody with the entire Easter season. If you want to really be peculiar, really be countercultural, go around and say, Hallelujah! Christ is risen to everybody instead of that old, outdated hello, which really doesn't mean a whole lot, you know? It's interesting that there are cultures where every greeting is a blessing. That's not been our culture so much, but there are cultures where you bless people when they, they meet you, you bless them when they come into your house, you give them a blessing before they leave. If you ever studied ancient Gaelic, there is no word for hello. It's God be with you. Or God and the blessed Son Jesus Christ be with you. Or God and Jesus Christ and the blessed Mother Mary be with you. Uh, because they always have to outdo each other <laughs> as they're saying hello. <laughs> So this is Easter, and a lot of times this is one of the few services that people attend. Uh, we have a kind of a habit sometimes of making sure we're here at Christmas and sure we're here at Easter, but maybe we miss a whole lot in between. And just to catch you up a little bit, I wanted to go over why was this all necessary? When God, who's the immense energy of virtue and balance and love brought forth, birthed this universe into being. All that is came to be. So even as God is, I am. That's the name that he told Moses. Moses said, who are you? He said, I am. We became bees. I be. We are beings as well. So in that way, we are like God. We came into being. We exist. And we exist designed to have a blessed relationship with God in love and virtue and balance. But what is not being, but the destroyer of everything that is, infected the souls of men and women with two things contrary to God, rebellion and violence. Now we know rebellion is illustrated in the story of Adam and Eve. They were discontent to just be, just have relationship with God, simply be in union with God. Rather, they decided they wanted to be God. And so their rebellion cost them dearly. And then violence was also illustrated in one of the early stories, Cain and Abel. Brothers who should have loved each other. But Cain rebelled against the judgment that God placed on his offering. And violence followed. These two things, violence and rebellion, and then the ensuing imbalance that we experience, have plagued the human race ever since. So even in our efforts to appease God, we traditionally resorted, resorted to violence. It's kind of interesting that every religion under the sun, every religion has felt like they had to sacrifice something to appease their God. Got to slaughter something to appease God. And yet as the people who, of the Bible grew in their faith and their knowledge of God, they began to realize, as Isaiah said, you think oh, I like your sacrifices? The sacrifices of God are a humble and contrite spirit. The sacrifices of God are love. These are the sacrifices that God wants. The scripture says, what's the whole duty of man? To do justly, to love mercy and walk humbly with your God. Humility is the thing that God wants. 
putting ourselves in a place to be receptive to all that God has for us, rather than putting ourselves forward as somebody apart from God. So, God became flesh to demonstrate to us what love looks like. Now, the effort was made with the law. If you love each other, you don't kill each other. If you love each other, you don't steal each other's spouses. If you love each other, you don't covet what somebody else has, you're glad for them. If you love God, you worship only God. You have a relationship with God and you don't take God's name in vain. These are how, what love looks like. But that didn't help people to love. That just gave them a burden which they piled more laws on in order to be sacrificial before God. God doesn't want you to be burdened. God wants you to be bold and bare before him. Humble, open, and honest. So the God who dreamed us into being became the victim of our violence to show us a more perfect way and to grant to us the gift and power of the Holy Spirit to overcome the violence by supplanting that trespasser in our hearts with seeds of love, the fertile seeds of the eternal. In Jesus' resurrection, which I could wax on for a long time, but is beyond all belief, yet rationally and logically believable. In our funeral service, our burial uh, prayer at communion, talks about life being changed, not ended. We know that life is changed, not ended. And it says this is our reasonable and holy hope. Reasonable. Why? Because people who were there left us a record. Not only in their words, but the fact that their behavior changed enormously after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Before the resurrection, they were all cowering, scared to death that they were going to be crucified next. They were not bold at all. Nothing changed in the, in the government. Nothing changed in the synagogue. What changed that made them suddenly full of boldness? They were no longer afraid of death. They knew that life was eternal. That was what God wanted for us all along, to have continual unity with God as God is being, that we would be with God in this eternal love. So Easter is the day that is the pinnacle point of the Christian faith. We don't need to fear death. We have already passed through it when we pass into an eternal relationship with God. All we have to be concerned about is when we change our clothes, what will our new garment look like? And most of us kind of like to try on new clothes all the time. I bet the one God has for us is going to look a whole lot better than the bodies we got now. Not complaining, not complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to read you this poem. Uh, it's from John O'Donna, whose book called To Bless the Space Between Us. It talks about the eyes of Jesus. Now imagine after the resurrection, all that Jesus suffered, all that he endured, and, and the relationships he built, and the disciples that he loved. And his love was just so overflowing, it couldn't just be limited to those few. He loved everybody. So this is called the eyes of Jesus. I imagine the eyes of Jesus were harvest brown. The light of their gazing suffused with the seasons, the shadow of winter, the mind of spring, the blues of summer and the amber of harvest. A gaze that is perfect sister to the kindness that dwells in his beautiful hands. The eyes of Jesus gaze on us, stirring in the heart's clay the confidence of seasons that never lose their way to harvest. This gaze knows the signature of our heartbeat, the first glimmer from the dawn that dreamed our minds, the crevices where 
thoughts grow long before the longing in the bone sends them toward the mind's eye. The artistry of the emptiness that knows to slow the hunger of outside things until they weave into the twilight side of the heart. A gaze that is still future, looking out for us to glimpse the jeweled light in winter stone, quickening the eyes that look at us to see through to where words are blind to say what we would love. Forever falling softly on our faces, his gaze plies the soul with light, laying down a luminous layer beneath our brief and brittle days until the appointed dawn comes, assured and harvest deft to unravel the last black knot. And we are back home in the house that we never left. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for our creation. But more than that, for our recreation in redeeming us from the mess that we find ourselves in. And we thank you for your patience with us as we struggle every day to reclaim the truth and the promise of the hope that you put in our hearts that life is changed, not ended. That we dare to live boldly, bravely, and full of love. That the only sacrifice you want from us is a humble heart and a life of love. Give us a special anointing to celebrate you in the manner in which you deserve to be celebrated. And to share with you the joy that you have in seeing so many of these, your creatures, your beings, restored to you in love. As we pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. together the Nicene Creed. We trust in one God, the Creator, the Father Almighty, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen, seen and unseen. We trust in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten eternally of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, from true God begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We trust in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Creator God, you made each of us in love and for love. In baptism, we were anointed members of the body of Christ and called to live holy lives and to participate in the mission of justice with mercy. Grant us the grace to be attentive to your call, 
to be sensitive to injustice wherever we encounter it, and in all things to act justly, to love tenderly, and to walk humbly with our God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. We are weak, limited, and inclined to turn away from you, Lord. We fail to acknowledge the inherent worth of each person as a child of God. We focus on what divides us and makes us different rather than on the great truth that unites us, that we are one body in Christ. We ask for your grace to enable us to appreciate the beauty of our diversity and to celebrate the gift of God incarnate in each one we meet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace, you made us to live in harmony and community, not chaos and violence. So much of our world is torn by strife. There are many divisions among us that result in a lack of freedom for all. Give us the grace and strength to be instruments of peace in our hearts, in our homes, communities, nations, and the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus said we must each be willing to take up our own cross if we are to follow where Christ leads. In carrying our crosses, we participate in Christ and in the burdens of our fellow human beings. God of the oppressed and suffering, we pray for all those who suffer in any way. Grant us the strength and compassion to carry our burdens and those of our fellow human beings and the grace and peace to know our losses, grief and pain as part of the mystery of our salvation and your love for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. The lives of your saints stand as a reminder of what it means to belong to God, to be persecuted for justice's sake, to live and die for God and for God's people. Thank you, most compassionate Holy One, for the lives of holy and prophetic leaders of our time. We ask that we can become in our various ministries of serving others the living presence of your Son and our brother, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring these needs and all our own needs and the needs of our families and communities to your loving care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, by your grace, Jesus endured the cross, seeing the joy that was awaiting him. Give us your grace, but also eyes to see those things that you have prepared for those who love you. May we be emboldened to courageously live that life that Jesus calls us to live, without fear, full of faith, and to make our lives count for your kingdom here and eternally in the life to come. To the glory of God and the Holy Trinity. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you. And through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death. And rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread 
And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise praise you. We we bless bless you. you. We We give give thanks thanks to you. And And we we pray pray to you, Lord Lord, our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people. The bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. Remember all who minister in your church and those who seek your truth. Remember all who have died in the peace of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Bring them into a place of eternal joy and light. And we grant that we may find our inheritance with St. Luke and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come, come, thy thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give Give us this day our our daily bread. bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, within you, and among you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. Yeah.